in a few minutes here in Geneva, John Ruggi, former UN Special Representative for Business and Human Rights, and Klaus Leisinger, founder of the Global Value Alliance and member of the board of the Gile Foundation, will be debating the UN framework for corporate human rights responsibilities and opportunities of leadership, we hope, for Switzerland. Professor Ruggi, Professor Leisinger, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Um, Professor Ruggi, how much progress has been made since the um, adoption of the 2011 Ruggi principles? Well, for me, not enough. But if you measure it against other historical standards, I think the progress has been quite significant in terms of uptake by governments, by other international standard-setting bodies, and by business uh, itself, by advocacy groups who use it as a tool for legal advocacy, for policy advocacy. It's, it's become the global focal point for the discussion of business and human rights. So you're reasonably happy with the progress, reasonably? Reasonably. Reasonably. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Leisinger, uh, what role can Switzerland play in progressing those principles and how? The what is easier than the how. But uh, <coughs> Switzerland was from the very beginning a major support of the Global Compact. And uh, these 10 principles, two of them were human rights principles, and a lot, there was a lot of misunderstanding what could that be, which led to the pro progress Professor Rocky was leading. So for Switzerland, it would be a natural consequence of supporting a responsibility framework for companies to also support the Rocky framework, as I would call it, because uh, I can't see a rational reason that you could be against respecting human rights while doing business uh, and competing with integrity. How? The issue is uh, all the processes that I know that have been successful were processes that were inclusive. Talk to the people, talk to all the stakeholders, be open to other, to other uh, opinions if there are, and try to find a moral common sense because it's a moral issue. It's not a legalistic issue. Of course. And uh, I think Switzerland is uniquely positioned to lead such a process, and I hope they do. Professor Ruggi, do you believe also that Switzerland has a role to play in this? Well, of course, every country has a role to play. But I, I, I would build on, on, on what Klaus said, that it, yes, it is a moral issue. Uh, but it also has practical dimensions. Um, companies that um, find themselves violating human rights often get into trouble themselves as companies. Uh, and so they have a risk management uh, dimension to deal with. Um, countries that support foreign investment of their own companies themselves have an obligation to make sure that the businesses that they support adhere to international standards as opposed to violating them. And uh, in terms of applying the guiding principles, what are the best solutions? Voluntary or legally binding rules? Well, or a mix of both? For, for me, that's easy. I've said from the beginning, it takes a smart mix of measures. I don't know of a single society uh, in human history that has relied solely on voluntarism. Uh, and we know that countries that have tried to rely solely on command and control have collapsed. Okay. And it's the smart mix. <clears throat> but what I think is the most single most important thing to do for every company is that the top management is taking a day aside to think what exactly would the respecting human rights uh, commandment, so to say, mean for us. What is our mission? What are our values? How can we bring our values in a form that the respect of the human rights is automatically part of it? I think I, I, my experience is that people are not, very few people are maliciously violating human rights. A lot of people have a lack of reflection and are doing things that they with the benefit of hindsight would not be doing. Mm -hmm. So reflection, talking, listening, uh, also listening to, to the civil society uh, advocates 
and you know, and then starting to reflect as you would reflect on any other corporate responsibility issue. I think Klaus is absolutely right. If I can build on that, I, I've I've spoken with an, with a number of corporate boards and CEOs, and have, have explained what this is all about, and they say, oh. Oh, that, oh, is that what it's about? Yes. Oh, wait, wait, so it, de it needs to be demystified exactly. uh, and, and, and put in terms that a business person or an entity can, can understand. And there is one difference. You know, there is not a Richter scale for human rights violations. We, you don't have to study seismology to know that a, an earthquake of nine is a different thing than an earthquake of two. But if you hear or read in the newspaper, company X has been violating human rights, intuitively this is on your eight or nine scale and it might not be. So it's not only proactive risk management, it is also becoming part of a process that improves the international relations and makes the world a better place. Professor Leisinger, Professor Ruggie, thank you very much for shedding some lights on this very important issue in Switzerland. Thank you. Thank you.